This conference will now be recorded. Okay, Bob. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Bob Underhill. I'm a trustee of the village and I serve as deputy mayor. I've been asked by Mayor Marvin to serve as the chair of this police community, community relations committee. The village formed this committee in response to Governor Cuomo's June executive order number 203 that requires all 500 plus communities across the state to complete a thorough objective and fact-based review of their police departments with citizens and other stakeholders in their community. While this community has been formed in response to the governor's mandate, I believe that this is a process that we should have adopted earlier and that it should continue in the future and not be simply a one-off event. As I just mentioned a few minutes ago before the meeting started, I believe that all organizations benefit from greater transparency and periodic review to make sure that training, policies, procedures, and governance are consistent with or exceed then current standards. Our committee is comprised of 25 stakeholders representing a wide spectrum of interests across the community. <clears throat> I'd like to direct everyone's attention to the, to the village website where we have a section dedicated to this effort. If you, when you go to the website, look at the lower right-hand corner, there's a tab that says PCRC and you can click on there. The site has some excellent resources. It includes the governor's executive order and then the New York State Resources Guide, which was prepared by the governor's office to assist local communities and citizens and serve as a guide to going through this re review and reflection process. Additionally, we've posted uh, videos and minutes from the two meetings that we've held uh, so far with this committee. The committee first met on October 19th, the library, at this meeting, the police department, represented by Chief Satriali, Lieutenant Bunyan, uh, Sergeant DeYoung, provided an in-depth review of the force. And last week on November 10th, the committee held its first of two meetings for the purposes for the purpose of soliciting comment and input from the community. And unfortunately, given the resurgence of COVID, we've been forced to resort to Zoom. Um, and I know we're all doing way too much Zoom, so. I apologize, but it's the only responsible way that we can complete this. Tonight is the second of these two listening sessions. Uh, as in terms of process going forward, in December, this committee will be developing a set of recommendations for potential changes and modifications uh, for our police department. In January, the committee will review these proposed recommendations, reforms, if you will, with the police department. And then in February, we will hold a public hearing to seek comment on the committee's recommendations prior to those being submitted to the village trustees for adoption at their March meeting. The governor's executive order requires municipalities to certify that their boards have taken action on these recommendations prior to April 1st. And as a reminder, the kind of the, the encouragement by the state is that they the state has the <clears throat> so they will withhold any state funding from any community that fails to complete this review. As a reminder, this is a listening session and not a Q&A session. Uh, there will be times, as I mentioned, in February for, uh, for public comment. Uh, following the roll call of our committee, we'll open up the floor for public comment. And we'd like to then in, to first have uh, invite residents to speak and then we'll have non-residents speak. If you can, please limit your comments to three minutes. Um, so Jim Palmer, could you please take a, a, a roll call just to make sure we have, we can document who's tuned in from the committee. And then for all of those people that, uh, those committee members that are not on this, we will make sure that we forward minutes as well as a link to the video, of uh, the recording of this meeting. Thank you, Jim. Okay, um, thanks, Deputy Mayor. Okay, we have uh, Mayor Mary Marvin, our committee chair, Robert Underhill, myself, Chief Christopher Satrielli is on the line, Lieutenant Richard Bunyan, Sergeant Nicholas DeYoung. See, we have um, Steve Palm, resident merchant. 
we have uh, Anar also joining us, Matt, Matt, Matt Murphy. Uh, Peter Thorpe should be trying to get in. I might just send him the link again. He was, um, he was gonna be calling shortly. Uh, we do not yet have uh, Dr. Nunes from Concordia or Reverend Burt or Bishop Ohms. Uh, Reverend Waterstone, thanks for joining us. Uh, Father Pete is not on yet, or Reverend Hartwell, uh, Rabbi Deich, uh, haven't uh, seen Roy Montesano, uh, or Kelly Wheel, uh, Tom Harity, if I'm pronouncing it, thanks for joining us. Uh, Shannon is not on yet from the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, John Thomas, thanks for joining us. Uh, I haven't heard from uh, Dr. Amit. And Tamika, thanks for joining us again. And uh, no George McGinnis yet. But as, as was with the last time, some might join us at some point in time, so. And, and, and Jim, I'd also like to, we should recognize that uh, yes. Trustee Mary, Mary Barons is um, on this call as well. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Mary. So now I'd like to, uh, with that, I would, uh, I will reiterate that we will uh, make sure that all committee members who are not in attendance tonight uh, will receive a minutes and a link to the video. Um, yes, and so I now I'd like to op open the floor for uh, comments first to uh, residents. Please keep your comments to three minutes. That would be appreciated. The passcode is 186. And if you could also, um, Kind of state your name and um, your affiliation. Thank you. Uh, Dale Freeze, I think you you were in before. You were making some comments prior to this being recorded. Um, I'd appreciate it if you if you're still on the line. If you could uh, state your name and uh, provide. The commentary that you wanted to submit. Um, I'm in, in Stoneley in Bronxville, and I've been in Bronxville since 1977. Uh, I've raised two sons here, uh, and um, I discovered, as I experienced Cub Scouts and a variety of other things, uh, how extraordinary the resources of our police department uh, were. And one of the um, uh, suggestions I've made is that um, the uh, village communicate exactly what the police department does on a daily basis, the normal um, crime uh, uh, protection and, and traffic and other things, um, but also what other resources are available and um, I would find out just by wending my way through Cub Scouts and looking for important uh, events to, to have. And one of them was having a wonderful policeman come and talk about justice and law to my boys. Uh, but it would be wonderful. The, the resources are so extraordinary. I would love to have... Um, uh, a full rendition of those resources. Um, and I realized that it's just the um, arrest list that we get in our wonderful village paper that is pretty much what we hear about. So let us know that you're wonderful. We know you are. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you very much, Dale. I'd also, if you do have um, some time, do go through the uh, the first meeting on October 19th, the video from that as a fantastic overview um, of our kind of the history. I did watch half of it. I watched 49 minutes of it. And, and then I think I had a, uh, something happen, but it was very- is is spectacular. So you got to watch the whole thing. That's, that's when Bunyan does most of his speaking too. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Any uh, uh, any other comments? Um, Bob, I just think maybe just for I don't know reaching more 
maybe I don't know how we should handle maybe a email. Um, I mean, I, I think, frankly, the lack of comments is a great compliment to how this police department is working. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody feels um, included. Um, and I, I, I don't have a great idea of uh, how to do this, but. Um, I, I think you're, you're absolutely right, Mayor. I think that, um, you know, perhaps we can work with my home, uh, my, my hometown Bronxville to put something right. in the paper. And I think, Jim, you and I would need to work together to uh, do another uh, email blast and uh, mm -hmm. other forms of communication to emphasize the ability to submit commentary via email or uh, you know the emails to any one of us or to the email uh, set up on the site. That's uh, a great yeah. idea. I'm just speaking as a common citizen and I'd love to know what do, what do, what experience have people had with our police? Um, because that makes you think about um, who they are and what and and what how they support us. Well, you know, Dale, we were we have these great plans to have um, a wonderful kind of meet the uh, police force. The chief and I did that and then of course COVID came but I think you're spot on it would be maybe a, a really you know informative thing to have a day in the life of um, you know what a Bronxville police officer does because the uh, the police blotter doesn't speak at all to their real work in this village. Um, a great so idea a day in the life of yeah, I think I might try to do that just because their work, to your point, it, it reaches so much deeper than, um, you know, just a police blotter. Well, and Mayor, the column you did months ago, and I still have it, on the training um, uh, the, that our police go through was extraordinary. And I cut it out and I have it in my Bronxville pile. Uh, because it was beyond anything I ever imagined, the, the kind of training, not just weapons, but everything. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Do you need a copy of it? I have it here on my chair. No, we, <laughs> I think, that's, that's, I think that's, that's one of the items that's very high on my, my list to present as a recommendation is to make sure that we have some form of <clears throat> um, annual state of the force review, uh, where we, um, where the the chief and the lieutenant and um, others present what's happened over the course of the year, and including um, use of force statistics and having um, uh, what what training protocols have happened, what's happened during the course of the year. I think as one item, we should have um, an annual state of the force. Um, review yeah. that would be open to the public. So, um, is there anyone else there, uh, any residents or non-residents that would like to make a comment? I'd like to open them. Okay. Bob, can I just add one more thing? Frankly, it's thanks to the, um, the uh, chief, a wonderful government teacher over at the school, Christina Riddell, invited the chief and I over just to speak about government policing and how it relates, um, frankly, to people like um, Ted, who's on the call. And we formed a little committee. Um, Ted would know her, Jesse Sandy was, um, and so we're meeting next week, the chief, myself, um, Jesse, and two more folks that she was gonna recruit and just, talk about you know kind of the relationship between the you know the young people at the school and their government and their police department and um you know this kind of came out of this mandate to your point to look look at yourself and both the chief and i thought 
maybe our connections with the um, the young people could be better. So um, that alone to me, uh, he and I taught two classes over at the school, and then now we're following up with this little round table. Mary, it's Dale again, and just tell me to be quiet when I'm saying too much. But when my boys were in elementary school and I emailed uh, Peter Thorpe uh, with this, um, they had a fifth grade um, segment where the chief and patrol officers came and talked about the law. And it was, there was some group in our elementary school who were involved, and this is really almost 40 years ago, and they were involved in a, um, uh, a justice and the law organization, and they had kids in the elementary school, and they asked the chief, Would you, could you do something to support this? And it was fabulous. And I'm hearing nowadays the grief over no civics in the elementary school, and possibly I'm sorry to lay all this work on the police department, but it would be wonderful for the elementary school kids to have maybe a crafted um, civics course uh, with input from our wonderful mayor on government and the law and justice. It would be wonderful. So apologies. <clears throat> Thank you, Dale. To piggyback off of that, um, what Mayor Marvin was saying, uh, another committee, member Kelly Wield is very close I think with Jesse Sandy so I think that could be a valuable relationship that you can utilize um, as well as what uh, the caller was saying I think that would definitely be really valuable as coming from a student even with high schoolers and things of that nature but to start early especially I think will really breed like a more Absolutely. understanding culture throughout the school I think I that's such a good point we have to start tough earlier and have the conversation you know we're such a small community and there's negatives to small but there's incredible benefits to small and to your point ted we're across the street we should be connecting as much as we can you point well taken start start earlier than where i'm starting which is senior and high school um, Thank you. And just for the record, that, 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 that was Ted Harity, a student at Bronxville High, who's a member of this committee. Yeah. Ah. Well, my first grade grandchildren, I know, would be very receptive to, um, to having somebody come talk with them and would probably have a lot of very simple questions. And it would be a wonderful way to start. It would be so enriching. Well, I think so, too. I and have a, the chief and Mayor? I have developed, oh, go ahead, Ted. No, no it, it's, it's uh, the chief mayor. Um, okay. Many, many of the programs we're discussing now uh, were in place for many, many years in the uh, elementary, middle, and high school. We did uh, bicycle safety. We did stranger danger. We did babysitting yeah. courses. Uh, Ann Hartmere chaired the juvenile law education project and these are all programs that uh, i was involved in as youth officer and uh detective and detective sergeant along the way and the, the pd is is ready to dust off the lesson plans and reinvent some of the programs and go over and teach uh whenever we're invited i know the school has been stressed with uh, different mandates and, and curriculum changes and the time for us that used to be allotted is uh, precious and the, the, the hours in the day are, are shrinking as far as what's available for free time. But we, we, we're flexible, we're available. We have uh, more than seven instructors. We have one sergeant who's a certified New York State teacher has his teaching license. Um, we've put him in the health classes for drug and alcohol prevention classes. And we're ready, willing, and more than able to expand on those programs, bring some of the old ones back. I think it's an, an outstanding point, and we welcome every opportunity to, to connect again um, at an earlier age, because we see 
we see crime, we see alcohol and drug abuse ha happening at an earlier age as the years go by. We need to begin to connect and communicate um, in the elementary school through high school. Bravo, bravo, Chief. I'd like to say something. I'd like to say something. I think this is all great um, and we can expand upon it, but ADA Thomas and I, we actually have gone into schools um, in different jurisdictions. For example, in your neighboring city of Mount Vernon and in Yonkers as well. And we have spoken to young people about, you know, interaction with the police. Um, so I think everyone needs to be involved. Uh, and I think we are all willing to work together. And I think that's why we're all here. We have people in different areas, not just the police, not just the DA's office. We have mm -hmm. students, we have pastors. And I think we all need to work together because I believe that students are extremely important. The younger we reach them, the better off it will be. But I don't think that anyone should really be left out because I think if you just have the police that go in, if you don't have a prosecutor, for example, as well, or you don't have a defense attorney, then I think that's only one part of the picture. So that's just a suggestion that I have. Yeah. Thank you for the record. That was Tamika Coverdale, who is a member of our committee and who is also a public defender. So Tamika, thank you very much for that input. I really appreciate it. Um, just to like engage some kind of like actual change that we can make, Chief Satriali, I am a part of like student government. So if you want to do that, I could definitely put you in contact with like, I'm sure you already have contact with administration, but um, just to like put it in front of the school panel and see other students' opinions on it, I think that might be valuable as well. Um, this is Dale again. When the chief was a member of the Maxwell Institute Board, and chief, I don't know if you remember back that far, um, but you helped shape us in so many ways and gave us such insights. And what I'm wondering is, are there village boards that would really benefit uh, from having one of your officers on, not just as a resource, but as an opinion leader? Because Maxwell was blessed to have you. I mean, I, really, I do recall Maxwell. I'm still on the advisory board, and and we're meeting via Zoom because of COVID. So, I still am a uh, a member and a participant on Maxwell. Just a tremendous resource for the village. And if there's any other uh, group or organization that you know feels input from the PD or communication from the PD would be valuable. We'll, we'll, we're, we're available. We are, we are more than flexible in hours and days of the week and weekends. So um, we're, we're available. We're, we, we are a valuable resource within the community. And uh, to your point about communication, I would love um, to spread more information, more positive news about what the PD does and uh, hopefully as a committee, we, we could come up with a mechanism to do that. We're at a bit of a disadvantage because we've gone from uh, the review press reporter to the reporter dispatch to LOHUD to now all digital online um, communication. And the, the, you know, while we used to have reporters with pen and pads in hand come into headquarters once or twice a week or three times a week, getting the blotter and getting input and covering stories, the budget cuts and the lack of printed newspaper has really reduced the level of communication that comes out of all government, really. And it's unfortunate, but we need to find a way to um, counter that and, and be more communicative and share more about what's happening uh, in the PD and how it benefits the community. Chief, I don't know if this would work, but um, would a pamphlet, a that a permanent thing, not not um, uh, you know, not just uh, incident uh, focused, but a pamphlet or something that would not be too uh, expensive, because certainly Mary writes like Thomas Wolfe. I mean, she's amazing. Um, but just to get somebody to put together. Uh, a small pamphlet that, that one could put in one's purse uh, on on what an incredible resource you all are. 
I think it's a fantastic idea, and I my guess is that this committee is going to come back to the PD in in January with a plan that includes uh, ideas like that. Not not only social media because not everybody is up on uh, social media, but we're we're missing that printing yeah. and, and and maybe monthly or or uh, annual newsletters um, like we used to print and we used to be able to distribute. So I think it's a fantastic idea. If I'm, Chief, yeah. I just wanted to make sure you heard Ted. Ted offered, he's in student government and he offered to be a, a bit of a conduit. And I got a breakup when he was talking, just that if you and Ted would connect, talking about coming to the school, because he's in the, um, the student government side of the school. Terrific. Sure, absolutely. Ted, yeah. contact me anytime. Email, cell phone. Um, I'll be certain to include John Thomas and Tamika. And yeah. if there's a time where we can present all sides and have a discussion involving everybody, I think mm -hmm. it'll be a valuable addition to the, the relationship between government and Bronxville School, the village and the school, as well as uh, prosecution. Um, we have a new mm -hmm. judge who's very involved and active in the community as well as Judge Primps. So let, let's let's come up with a plan where there's a group of us that can can discuss uh, government issues. For sure, Call I'll me. email you later tonight. Yeah, Ted, I just gave you a job, but it's a good connect, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ted. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank so you. Any other, I see, I see we have um, anyone else calling in uh, who's not on this committee that has a co comment to make? Because we've had some great conversations and I think the chief, your idea of having um, John and Tamika and the, and, uh, the police, I think that, that would be a, a phenomenal exchange. I'd love to be a part of that. So I look forward to that. Um, so. I, I look forward to this to this recommendation process because I think there's going to be a lot of really interesting ideas to come up that's going to make the village a richer place and it's going to make the force a better force. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, any other comments? Uh, hearing none. Uh, I have. And, it's Dale, and I have one last uh, comment. I think a lot of people might have something to say if the conduit was sitting next to them. And I see Peter Thorpe regularly who was muttering about, did I have any thoughts? And I'm just wondering if as you go forward um, for more people to talk about the fact that you are so accessible and that you really, you know, Mary's idea of, of some kind of questionnaire maybe would solve this. So, um, but just keep at us. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dale. Hey, sure. uh, Bob? Yes. Bob, this is a note from the call-in number. Uh, and um, I just wanted to uh, commend Dale for being a live citizen, telling us all of good ideas for the future. Thank you, Peter. That sounds like Peter Thorpe is also on our committee. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> and uh, thank you for Dale. Uh, so Peter, uh, Dale says you mumble a lot. So <coughs> that into consideration. He mumbles I, direction. <laughs> I, I, I withdraw any recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> okay, well, uh, so to the committee members, thank you very, very much for being a part of this. I know everyone's super busy um, and everyone here has been, this is meeting number three for many of you. So a huge, I wish we could do a say thank you in person, uh, but I look forward to working with you in the weeks ahead and I will be in touch about um, starting to get some ideas running amongst the committee so we can start putting pen to paper. Thank you for all you're all doing. It's just so appreciated. So uh, Jim, with that, I think we are able to
wrap up this meeting and then we will, we've got some great input. Um, Jim, you and I, with the mayor's help, we need to think about uh, really pushing forward a, a, an aggressive com communications plan here. It's so important that we get as many voices as possible in this. Right. Great. Okay, Bob, well, everyone. So, Jim, Bob, I think we can. Yes. Hey, Bob, I'm sorry. I just found a note I picked up from a unidentified but good citizen of the village a question um, which is translates as follows. Why didn't the police do anything that we might have known about to follow up on the senior car parade that occurred last spring when one of the cars had painted on its side ACAD and F12? Hello? Um, yeah. I mean... Can can I can I step in there? Yes. Um, yes. I, it actually turned out to be a really good I think the chief would say to experience. We reached out to the young people who put that on their car. We had conversations with them. In many ways, it opened a door of conversation. Um, I think everybody, Peter, in many ways, sometimes things have to happen. And it it all, again, credit to the chief. He reached out to the, the young people involved, as did I. We've had conversations. And... Um, and honestly, we've all learned from each other on that one. So believe it or not, Mer I net net it was um, incredibly positive, Peter. Mary, I, I that was a wonderful answer, and I thank you. And I will pass it on to the unidentified person because they did not know that. I so think it's that, also thank you. It was an immediate. It was an immediate connection on a real right. human, personal level, and we we just kind of, um, many ways, become friends. Well, I think it's also it, fair to say, <clears throat> Peter, pass along that um, the chief shared pizza with the individual who was responsible for that. So there was a great deal of yeah. empathy and learning uh, that went on here. So that's an event that that young person will never forget. Uh, a, and a, I, a, one, a one, Bob, a wonderful and chief, a wonderful ending to that story. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chief. Oh uh, boy. So anyway, so uh, with that, um, thank you. That was Peter Thorpe, who's also a member of this committee. Uh, so with that, I, uh, Jim, I think we can, Thank everyone and um, we'll be in touch. And a lot of gratitude for being a part of this committee and sharing your comments today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you.